Now, the disputed Falkland Islands are voting in a second day of a referendum on whether or not to remain a British territory. But a loyal pro-British sentiment among many islanders leaves little doubt as to the outcome, while Argentina, who still lay claim to the islands, have called the vote a sham. Artie's Polly Boyko reports now on the toxic mix of nationalism, politics and oil. These are some very far-flung islands from Britain, a tiny territory. Now, nevertheless, the islanders are expected to vote overwhelmingly in favour of remaining a British overseas territory. But this isn't just a question of national identity. We know that the Argentinian government has already dismissed the vote as a propaganda exercise cooked up in London. But there's the prospect of oil that a lot of people are talking about. Now, there's speculation surrounding how much oil there is an estimated 60 billion barrels of oil potentially to be found in the Falklands Basin and that's worth about 167 billion dollars to compare that with Britain's oil reserves well they seem scant in comparison the UK has an estimated 2.85 billion barrels of oil so if this estimation proves to be correct if the Falkland Islands do indeed have these 60 billion barrels then we're talking about more oil than the reserves of the USA Qatar or even Libya to talk about this, I'm joined in the studio by Ken Hurst. He's a journalist. Ken, to what extent is this dispute a question of resources for both the British and the Argentinian government? Well, it, it can be argued that it's always been questionable um, whether it's morally or logistically sustainable to try to protect a, 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 a colony that's 8,000 miles away. I suppose the argument one could have added to that is, is it economically sustainable yeah. sending warships and so on and so forth. But of course the oil rather changes all that, um, but it only changes it if you believe it's morally justifiable to go on, what shall we call it, um, you know, a colonial plundering mission, something we did in the 18th and 19th centuries. and. Personally, I don't happen to believe it is. But a lot of people are saying that this is a question of domestic politics for the Argentinian president because there is a flailing economy at home and, uh, you know, picking up the question of the island's sovereignty is going to increase her ratings back home. Well, um, that may or may not be true. Certainly South America um, as a bloc um, may be having its economic issues, but it's certainly becoming generally an economic powerhouse, part of the, 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 um, the Brazilian, the Russian, the Indian, the China, the, the rise of those nations, and it's part of all of that. And we've had issues, haven't we, about um, vessels carrying our flags not being allowed into some, some of those ports. Um, so um, there is that issue around it. But, I, you know, I don't know how sustainable that is. But isn't trying to ramp up the uh, Argentinian claim to the islands just a way of increasing popularity at home? Well, it may be, but you've got to remember that President Cristina Fernandez actually had um, a landslide victory herself in the 2011 election, I think it was. So she's probably um, more politically stable than David Cameron is. And finally, do you think the referendum is going to resolve this dispute? Referendums don't resolve disputes. Actually, negotiation resolves disputes, and that's what really needs to happen down there in the, in the Falklands or the Malvinas, whichever yeah. you call them.